Okay, this article that I'm posting on the blog entry this morning actually kills two birds with one stone. And uh, the reason I'm commenting on it is because I got a bunch of emails from people and comments too in some of the YouTube videos asking me to comment on the Pope saying that he wants to change the Bible in regards to what people call the Lord's Prayer. And then something that the Pope said a couple of weeks ago, no, about a week ago, actually, in regards to how powerful the devil is again, right? And so first and foremost, let me go back to the blog entry here. Uh, notice that picture, okay? Now, he's actually making the statement inside what's called the Vatican's audience hall. I did a video on that building back in January showing how the building was specifically designed to look like the head of a serpent. Worse yet, the place where the Pope stands when he speaks to the people is actually made to look like he's speaking from inside the serpent's mouth, fangs and all, yet he claims to be a Christian. Confusing, isn't it? Well, stay with me on this one because it doesn't end here. Next, we see in the article, this article here, of course, we see the article reports on the fact that the Pope also wants to change the Bible passage, many call the Lord's Prayer, so as to remove what he claims is a confusing statement made from our God. But the basic reality here is that passage is not actually a prayer. It's an outline for prayer. The apostles asked Jesus how to pray, and he showed them how to do just that. In fact, if you look at John chapter 17, where Jesus is actually praying in the garden before his arrest, he uses that simple outline for prayer. If you check out my bogus Bibles page, you will see the popes of Rome have changed God's word more than once throughout history, and more so in the last days, so as to both allow pagan dogma to appear biblical, as well as remove certain doctrines and even some prophecies that expose them as Antichrist. And since the Pope is quoting from the historically intact and heavenly protected King James Bible that he claims is so confusing in the so-called Lord's Prayer, one can expect his newest version of the Bible with the altered verses from the Lord's Prayer will be no different than the other Vatican Bibles that have literally thousands of verses missing and rewritten. I exposed two such Vatican-sanctioned Bibles on my bogus Bibles page the NIV, and the NASB. And you would also do well to check out the link on the bottom of that page that exposes the so-called New King James Bible. I mean, even the logo on the cover of that Bible is demonic. Now, it is true we need not converse with Satan. All we need to do is use the name of Jesus to get him to flee. I mean, he's actually that weak when he gets around real Christians. And it's also true that the Lord would never lead any of us into temptation. I mean, we do that on our own by just stepping away from him. But keep in mind, the Pope is a Jesuit. He is standing in a building built to look like a serpent that Satan used to cause our first parents to fall in the Garden of Eden. And he does so claiming to be the leader of all Christians that are members in the World Council of Churches, which is the One World Church. And yes, the Seventh-day Adventist Church is in fact a contributing member of the Pope's church. That's right. The Seventh-day Adventist leaders are lying to you when they say they are not under the Pope's leadership. See the documented proof here. They are actually sending the Pope your tithes. The reason all of this comes off as confusing to some people is because confusion is in fact a fruit of Babylon, and Satan wields it well when disobedience is embraced on the one he's targeting. The confusion comes upon them, and then apostasy follows. In fact, the term Babylon is defined in Hebrew as confusion by mixing. And the mixing is to mix truth with error, which is also the way you actually define apostasy. But now for the main reason I'm sharing all this. The Pope just glorified Satan by declaring him much more powerful than any of us, which is true if you have no faith in Jesus to be able to resist Satan as per James chapter 4 verse 7's declaration. So where is the error he preaches that is designed to foster all this confusion and to get the people to trust him? Do you recall these three videos I posted not too long ago? Number one, the Pope said Jesus failed. Number two, the Pope says the cross of Christ and God himself are failures. And finally, number three, the Pope says you are stupid. In other words, the Pope of Rome ignores what James chapter 4 verse 7 says to declare Jesus is a failure and Satan is a great dragon who is much more powerful than anyone. And he also declares the trusted King James Bible is confusing, but the NIV, the NESB, and many more like them, as well as his soon-to-be-written Bible based on paganism, with thousands of verses missing, is much more easier to understand. And because he believes everyone under his guidance are so stupid, they must follow his guidance so as to make it home to heaven, because without his help, they're all going to hell. Bottom line. 
This pope, more than any other pope in history, has perfectly defined the term Babylon. Thank you for watching. God bless.